If y'all didn't think I could be any more consistent on this channel, get ready. Hello my favorite people, today we'll be learning about the English Civil War. Yesterday I posted a reaction where I learned about the royal family and just all the in in all the intricacies and incest, let's not forget the incest, that went on with the history of the royal family. And a lot of the stuff that actually built up to it involved wars and like backstabbing and all that stuff. So a big part of that was the English Civil War, which you guys said I need to learn more about. So therefore, we're learning about the English Civil War today. Make sure you like this video so I know you enjoy the culture series. Subscribe to the second channel, I'm gonna be doing vlogmas over there. Follow my Instagram so you can keep up on my day-to-day -day life. And make sure you DM me any video suggestions or requests you have over on Instagram. Like this video though, that's really important. All that being said, here we go into the English Civil War. Oh boy. And a lot of y'all were saying, how do I not know this stuff? How do I not know this stuff? See, the problem is with the American education system, or just America in general, we only care about ourselves. So I spent my time in high school learning about US history, and in fact, now that I'm in college, I have to retake history again, but I'm learning Texas history and US history. The rest of the world does not matter to the education system here. So I'm doing my own research because I want to, I have interest in it, and you guys seem to like it. I dip my hair in boiling water and it's dripping, so if that's bothering any of you, Black girl problems. Can't help it. All right, all right, here we go. King Charles I of England and Scotland has recalled Parliament. Why? Because his Scottish subjects were rebelling against his religious reforms and he needed men and money to fight them. Mm. He was hoping that Parliament would forget the previous 11 years in which he had governed without them and simply <laughs> give him the money. He was wrong. Instead, <laughs> Parliament wanted to right all of Charles's previous wrongs against them and so he dissolved it after only three weeks, hence its name, the Short Parliament. The oh my rebellion God. Scots called Covenanters soon after crossed the English border and occupied these lands. Thomas Wentworth, the king's close ally, was to lead the English resistance, but instead the army opted for a Whoa. different strategy. Of okay, the video kind of just jumped right into everything going on. So, so far what I can understand, it, there there's a king who's trying to unite Scotland and uh, England. I keep trying to refer to the UK as England. They're not the same thing. But there's a guy trying to reform. He basically separated them and he went to Parliament Parliament to try to get their help because he needed men to fight the Scottish people to bring them back. But Parliament said, F you, you kind of just like backstabbed us. You have to basically fix everything you did if you want us to help. And he said, F you again. So yeah, that's where we're at. The way. Charles then decided to cave into most of the Scots' demands and also he would pay them to leave the parts of the North that they'd seized. Charles mm. needed yet more money to pay them and so once more he had to recall Parliament. <laughs> he did so hoping that- Poor Charles. The buddy can't catch a break, but at the same time, it doesn't sound like he deserves a break either. Again, they'd simply give him the money, but instead, Parliament passed a max that Charles did not like, but given his weak position, could do nothing about. Opposition <laughs> to Charles was led by a man called John Pym, a He's Puritan worse. and believer in the rights of Parliament. Parliament had passed the Triennial Act, ah. which meant the Parliament had to be- The King is not England. <sighs> wow. Okay, that's a big thing too. Even up until this point, like I said in the last video about the royal family, it's still so just obtuse or weird to know that the queen basically doesn't have any actual power. Like on the day-to-day -day life, she's not actually controlling or doing anything for the government. Y'all were saying she's just like a touristy figure who has a lot of money. money. So for the kings and the queens to not really have that much power, it's kind of like, what is the point of them? Because from my understanding, a king is supposed to be the one with the most power in government. The queen, the most power in government. Whatever they say goes. If they want to starve the people, they can. If they want to give away their riches to anyone, they can. But it doesn't seem like that's the case. Fierce Puritan and believer in the rights of Parliament. Parliament had passed the triennial The king is not England. The Parliament had to be called at least once every three years and that this specific Parliament mm -hmm. had to give its consent to be dissolved. There was also the Habeas Corpus Act. Which you have to give your consent to be dissolved. Why would you ever consent to be dissolved, though? That the king couldn't arrest him ever he pleased anymore. Furthermore, hmm. William Lord, the Archbishop of Canterbury, was arrested, and Parliament also had Thomas Wentworth Papist. executed for his previous conduct in Ireland. Seeing that Charles was Aww. making concessions to the English and Scottish, many Irishmen were hoping for the same. Some Irish nobles, led by Philip O'Neill, seized forts and demanded that the Irish be afforded similar concessions. The yeah. Irish populace right. rose Please. up shortly afterwards, but they were less interested in concessions and more interested in kicking the planted English Protestants out of Ireland for good. Back in England, Parliament was still fighting a- Does that tie into the IRA and the Bloody Bloody Sunday and all that stuff that we learned about previously? Man. Much King For Charles such a small area, it's a lot of trouble. By a very slim margin, it passed the Grand Remonstrance. This was basically a list of reasons why Charles was terrible and the <laughs> previous church reform- Wait, what was the list? 
of the Grand Remonstrance. This was basically- He's corrupt, too nice to Catholics, his advisors suck, his face is dumb, he ignores Parliament. Eh. List of reasons why Charles was terrible and that the previous church reforms of Lord and the Irish Rebellion were part of a Catholic plot. By 1642, Charles had had enough of people opposing him and decided to put an end to it. He gathered some soldiers and marched into Parliament with the intent of arresting five of its members, the most notable being John Pym. These members had fled before Charles had arrived and he left Parliament empty-handed. Whilst he failed to arrest those who'd opposed him, he did manage to do one thing. He convinced everyone that he was a tyrant. Yeah, I was about to say, how can you just walk into Parliament, which I'm is like... A big part, parliament, I guess, is like y'all's congress, I'd say, right? Like, it's a lot to get into, but basically our government system has like three branches. Parliament is one of, would be one of our branches. So he literally just tried to walk in as if like he calls all the shots. That's very dictatorial, or as they said, tyrantish, tyrantian, tyrant. Result, Parliament created the Committee of Safety, which promptly took control of London as well as its militia, and Charles quickly fled the city. Both sides started to court out and make preparations for conflict, such as when Charles attempted to seize Hull and its armory, but they politely yet firmly told him Hull. to jog on. Parliament declared that Charles was a papist and wanted to enslave England with the help of the Irish oh, rebels, no. and Charles warned the aristocracy that Parliament would come for them next if the radicals had their way. What's on the twenty second of August, sixteen forty two, Charles raised his standard over the town of Nottingham. This is considered by many to be the formal beginning of the English Civil War. This pitted Charles's royalist forces known as- So it's all because of King Charles. Hmm. Valiers against those of Parliament known as the Roundheads. As a King Charles, the one who lost America, right? I remember reading a comment about that. I'm pretty sure. K King Charles. I saw a comment, I swear, in the last video. Uh, let me know if I'm right, or did I think of it wrong? I think, though, King Charles... Yeah, this fits his narrative, too, just fucking everything up. Parliament had the but hey, we got America! The south and the east, and Charles had the rest. Parliament had much greater access to money from the larger cities in the south. It also controlled the navy, and with it, trade. The king had mm. some support in Ireland, the help of the Scottish Sailing Royalists, would be so and had cool. access to much better commanders, the most notable being Prince Rupert of the Rhine, Charles's nephew from Bohemia. Mm. Charles assembled his forces and made straight for London, where he was met by the parliamentary army led by Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, at the Battle of Edinburgh. Charles it is going to take an L. Tie, and after regrouping, Charles dithered on what to do next before resuming his march on London. By this point, the Earl of Essex had blocked the road there and Charles retreated, meaning that this wasn't going to be a short war. Throughout 1643, the Royalist forces gained the upper hand. The Parliament Okay, but what's his goal here? Like, he tried to kill other people in Parliament. They fled because they already assumed he would do that. He's now turned everyone against him, except for, I guess, his army men. Everyone thinks he's a tyrant. He's a terrible king. He has an ugly face, like they said before. And now he's at a standstill in London, trying to regain it back. Regain it back for what, though? Like, what do you want from this other than to have complete power? What else would you want? Did manage to procure the help of the Scottish Just to say he did it? By promising them lots of cash. The Scottish hmm. also wanted assurances that the Church of England would be modelled after the Church of Scotland. Naturally, Parliament was never going to agree to this. Yeah, and so its leaders had poor to Scotland, plan. naive. They lied. The Covenanters were vital to the Parliamentarian cause and proved their worth in 1644 at the Battle of Marston Moor. It was here that the Royalist army was devastated, particularly by the Parliamentarian cavalry led by a certain Oliver Cromwell. <laughs> after this defeat, Oliver the Cromwell. Royalists basically lost the entire North and York fell shortly afterwards. Despite their success, Parliament wanted more and so ordered that far-reaching reforms be implemented which led when to the more? creation of the professional, well-equipped New Model Army. It's important to note here that not all of the country was happy to be involved in the Civil War. Many local lords and leaders wanted nothing to do with it and so assembled their own soldiers, known as clubmen, to dissuade either side from coming anywhere near them. Hmm. 1645 saw the decisive Battle of Naseby, which was yet again a crushing defeat for the Royalists and was followed up by many more over the next year. Have Charles, knowing that the win? war was lost, handed himself over to Aww. a Scottish force in mid-1646, ending the Civil War. Parliament negotiated with the Scottish to hand over Charles, which they did in 1647. Okay, so I called Scotland naive for teaming up with Charles, but I guess they're not... Hmm. It's kind of like in the movies where you team up with the bad guy, but like you're not actually loyal to them. It's just because they're kind of along... They're just a, a stepping stone in your cause. So now we see them turning over King Charles to Parliament. But if all this was going... <laughs> King Charles should have known he was going to take an L. How like pompous and head up his ass could he be? 
to think you're actually going to overturn parliament. Just because you're king or were king, right? I feel like that's very selfish. And like they were saying, not all the people wanted to even be involved in the civil war. You basically forced your one kingdom that you were trying to unite into, I wouldn't say choosing sides, but putting them in a situation they didn't want to be in to begin with. Just because of your pride? What was his actual goal here? What was his reasoning? Because, like, he felt like he was snubbed by parliament? Okay, we'll take that up with parliament, but you can't because they already fled. So just leave it alone, buddy. Whatever. But parliament had Charles. Surely they could enact the change they wanted, right? But no. The issue was that Charles was completely untrustworthy and would yeah. always take the first opportunity to undo the concessions he'd made. Furthermore, much of England was getting riotous due to the tax burden for funding the army. Tax? Parliament tried to disband the army, but the army, led by Sir Thomas Fairfax, said no, which was hard to argue with because guns. This reflects the fact that political society <laughs> in England in was thing. becoming increasingly radical during this period. One of the most extreme groups were the levellers, who wanted the army to throw out Parliament and create a democratic, i.e. level, society in which all freeborn men would be able to vote for accountable policy okay so parliament actually has the power that i thought the king and queen would have parliament has total power and now they're saying or some of the people are saying the levelers who are a group of i guess you could call them rebellers i use that word loosely they're saying they want parliament i don't know if it's to be abolished but basically they want more a diluted a diluted um source of power between different entities they don't just want parliament to have all the power they want to be a democracy during his captivity, Charles had secretly made a compact with the Scottish called the Engagement. Oh God, here comes Charles again. <laughs> they would invade England and restore him with his old powers in town. You already tried Charles that. Escaped, the Scottish invaded and royalist rebellions broke out across the country, beginning the Second English Civil War. This war was a short one and within a year the new model army had crushed the rebels and defeated the Scottish army at the Battle of Preston. Is Charles, Charles decided dead? to return to the negotiating table, but the leadership of the new model army, known as the Grandees, weren't interested. Mm -hmm. They saw Charles as a lying tyrant who's act- <laughs> It's kind of just like disciplining a child. I don't know if I have any viewers who are like loyalists to Charles the King or whatever, but I don't know. What his decision making or processing is kind of predictable. Killed At least from my perspective. That there would be no worthwhile settlement whilst he remained. In late 1648, some soldiers commanded by Colonel Thomas Pride stormed Parliament and removed anyone who disagreed with the Grandees in what is known as Pride's Purge. The Parliament that was left, known as the Rump Parliament, opted to Rump. put Charles on trial for high treason. He okay. was found guilty, sentenced to death. Treason? I wouldn't necessarily say it's treason. All he did was try to go against Parliament. That's not necessarily saying he wanted like to harm England. Or maybe it is. You're trying to destroy the government system. Mom! On the 30th of January, 1649, was beheaded at Whitehall Palace. Oh. Shortly after... Well, there goes Charles. Sad. Okay, he was a nuisance. You could even argue he was a tyrant, but did he deserve treason and a beheading? Did any innocents die? If so, then I guess his death was deserved, but he was just trying to take back the crown. I kind of feel bad for him, but at the same time, he caused a lot of trouble for no reason. The Republic was declared called the Commonwealth of England, which was governed by the Rump Parliament and the Council of... How did Scotland turn out? Parliament and the Council didn't really do much except sell off royal assets and lands in order to fund the army to send it to Ireland. The Irish rebels, known as the Irish Confederates, were being supported by English and Scottish royalists who had rallied behind Charles's son, also called Charles. Oh, God. Cromwell was tasked with the reconquest of Ireland, and with his army of well-equipped veterans, made inroads very quickly. Yeah. He gave the I was about to say, in the family tree we were learning yesterday, there was like Charles III, Charles IV, Charles V, all these different su successors of different names. Fresh assurances that those who surrendered would not be harmed, but when he took the towns of Drogheda and Wexford, he killed him, I swear. He slaughtered their garrisons yeah. and many of the civilians living there. Cromwell returned to England. Who did in that? 16... Who did that? Was it Charles II or the Parliament? Terrible. Cromwell was tasked with the reconquest of Ireland and with his army of well equipped veterans made inroads very quickly. He gave the Irish assurances that those who surrendered would not be harmed, but when he took the towns of Drogheda and Wexford, he promptly slaughtered their garrisons and many of the civilians living there. Cromwell returned to England in 1650, but the conquest was largely completed in his absence by 1652. Ireland was completely ransacked during this invasion, and it's estimated that about 40% of its total... 
Cromwell was rooted to the conquered Irish. Disease and starvation led to roughly 40% of Ireland's population dying out. 40%? That's almost half the population. Fuck Cromwell. Fuck Cromwell. Fuck Cromwell. Wow, what an ass. Population For what? Died between 1641 and 1652. It was then ordered that the rebels were to lose their lands and about 35,000 of them were forced into indentured servitude and shipped off to the New World to work on the plantations there. Speaking... And maybe this is where we get the no Irish allowed signs in the U.S. The New World. Most of the American the New World. the Royalist huh. side, but with greater support for Cromwell in the North. So upon his return to England, Cromwell had to deal with the Scottish, who had received Charles and proclaimed him as Charles II of Scotland, beginning the Third English Civil War. Cromwell marched his army north and crushed a larger force at the Battle of Dunbar and swiftly occupied Edinburgh. Okay, so the people who are continuing to be loyal to the Charles dynasty... Do they just want the old Britain back? Like, I don't... I don't know. I'm sure there were Scottish people who weren't on board with this and kind of just got sucked into it. But the, I, I, from what this video has shown so far, there's no... I don't have any trust for the Charles dynasty or... They haven't proven goodness within them. I feel like everything they do is self-motivated. So I don't think they have they would have my best interest at heart. But at the same point, you don't really have a choice, I guess. It's either King Charles or be sucked into Parliament England. Next year, the two met again at Worcester, and yet again, Charles lost and promptly ran away from the <laughs> continent, ending once and for all the English Civil Wars. How do you leave? In 1653, Cromwell was getting a bit sick of the rump parliament, and so dismissed most of its members. He then created a parliament made up of a select few men who were considered to be deeply moral in what is known as the Parliament of the Saints, or the- I don't like Cromwell, and this is giving me very much, um, from Game of Thrones, those weird beard men who made Cersei walk through the streets and be shamed. Freaking weirdos. I don't like this. Cromwell, I don't like him. Ebon's parliament. This parliament failed to do anything, and so Cromwell had a constitution crafted called the Instrument of Government, which declared Cromwell to be the Lord Protector of the Commonwealth of England's... D protector of the Realm. Is that what they were called in Game of Thrones? The dudes who wear those cloaks. It's whenever, what's his name, Joffrey became king, and uh, Cersei killed them all in the Citadel. They deserved it. But that's what this is giving me. And this isn't Game of Thrones based off of um, English history. And an island. That is to say that all three were now part of the same state, meaning Cromwell, okay. with the help of the Scottish general George Monk, had achieved what all the previous kings of England had failed to. Anyway, Cromwell's <laughs> rule was marred with financial problems, and it also saw I the Commonwealth dragged into numerous wars. The first was the First Anglo-Dutch War in 1652, which started because of the 1651 Navigation Act, which prevented English colonies in North America from trading with foreign states. Long story short, the Dutch lost, but very little changed. This wasn't to be Cromwell's last foreign war, since in 1654 one broke out with Spain. In the end, the Commonwealth seized Jamaica Spain. and the Cayman Islands in the Caribbean, as well as Dunkirk in Europe. Oh, Back in England, Jamaica! Cromwell was struggling with his new regime. In 1654, after a failed period of direct military rule, a new constitution was passed and Cromwell was offered the crown, which he declined. Resistance to his rule was done. Why did Cromwell not want the crown? What was the whole point then? He just wanted to be a good leader, or what's it called? General? Director of the army? And also, why are they conquering Jamaica? What business do you have in Jamaica, other than to take their resources? Mm to grow and so he had to resort to much fiercer tactics to get Obey me. This included taxing without the consent of parliament and throwing those who disagreed with him in prison without trial. He's just as bad as Charles then. He's just as bad as Charles. If you can behead Charles for what he did, what makes you think, Mr. Cromwell, you're any better and don't deserve the same fate? You're going against parliament, same thing Charles did. Taxing people without representation the founding of america huh. of course he could do nothing about those who disagreed with him outside of england such as thomas hobbes who whilst living in france wrote his magnum opus leviathan magnum this opus. was a defense of absolute monarchy like that in france and condemned the concept of a republic cromwell's troubles came to an end in 1658 because he died. The title of Lord Protector <laughs> passed to his son, Richard Cromwell, because again, oh, it was nothing like a monarchy. Basically, no one wanted Richard to rule, and in 1659, he... Yeah, it's the exact same thing as what Charles was doing. 
resigned and the Rump Parliament returned to run the country. <laughs> this all went to hell pretty quickly and it looked like another civil war was brewing, so General Monk marched down south. Once so in Parliament London, took he reinstated power again. all of the members of Parliament who had been ousted in Pride's Purge. In 1660, Parliament, the same one that had been in session since 1642, dissolved itself, hence why it is known as the Long Parliament. During this time... Aww! So the homies got back together just to dissolve themselves. Why? They, they were just like, it's not working out. Let's just be done with this. Okay, let's see what they do next. Monk had been in contact with Charles, who issued what was called the Declaration of Breda, forgiving everything that had happened since 1649, so long as the people there accept... So the son of Charles. Ugh. Him as their king. The exception to this forgiveness... Religious was toleration? ...his father's death warrant. A new parliament was summoned called the Convention Parliament, which acknowledged Charles as Charles II of England and their rightful king. In May of 1660, Charles returned, ending the Commonwealth in England. Oh no! Freaking! Okay, but again, I can't really speak on this. I don't know y'all's situation. Is it not a good thing to have a United Kingdom? We do have a United Kingdom. It's called the United Kingdom. But to have Scotland, Ireland, the UK, England, and wales what is wales now as one country the, is that not something good why would charles disband that i hope you enjoyed this episode oh, that's thank it. You for man again a lot of the i feel like wars and stuff just doesn't make any sense or it was unnecessary it all seems like a lot of power grabs and like self uh, motivations it's not actually for the um for the prosperity of england or uk like, for example, what Charles II just did, dissolving the One Kingdom back into three portions. And why were they in Jamaica? What does Jamaica have to do? And why were they fighting Spain? I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe we can do a part two where we learn more about this or look at a di another video about the Civil War and see a different perspective that highlights different details. Y'all let me know what you want to see. I'm down to do it. Make sure you like this video if you haven't yet. Subscribe to the second channel. I'm doing vlogmas over there. Follow me on Instagram. Like this video. DM me your requests. And bye. Bye. <laughs>